Hi, my name is Alex with Apex Tech Tutorials, and today is the final part of a three-part series where I talk about epics. If you haven't already, please make sure you're subscribed, make sure you drop a like in this video, and if you have any questions about anything that I'll cover in this video, please make sure you drop a comment below. Let's jump into Jira. Okay, so here I am in a just a regular Jira software project. For this demonstration, it doesn't matter if you're on a Kanban board or a Scrum board, they're both pretty much gonna work exactly the same for what I'm gonna try to explain to you. I will kind of highlight some of the subtle differences with respect to how Jira treats epics differently, but in this video, we're gonna be focusing on epics and I'm gonna be focusing on how to create the epic, what the epics look like, and how to use them and inter interact with them within the world of Jira. So the first thing you wanna do when you're talking about epics is you wanna create one. And there's a couple of different ways to create epics that I wanna highlight for you. If you've seen my video that I've published on different ways of creating issues in Jira, this is gonna be a refresher of that. But the focus of this video is really going to be just on the epics. So the first way, and usually the most basic way that teams create epics in Jira, is they click on the create button. Now, I do want to highlight something very special, very unique to the world of epics that for new people using Jira just doesn't make any sense. And so to show you that, let me actually jump into an epic here. And here, right out of the gate, we are going to talk about this specific thing that I'm telling you about. When you create an epic in Jira, you have to provide a summary. And this is a requirement for every single issue in Jira. The summary equals the title and no issue can exist without the title. Why at last didn't just call it title instead of summary is beyond me. But the point here is though that your summary is the title that Jira will use to name your epic. This is important. More important though is the epic name. And at this point you're probably asking yourself what the heck is the difference between the epic name and the summary? And so the short answer is nothing. Most of the time, I usually give my issues the same epic name as the summary. I literally just copy paste. They're not the same thing, but to the naked eye, they're pretty much the same thing. To the well-seasoned practitioner of Jira, they will know that the epic name is actually used at the story level as an epic link to then create the parent-child relationship between the epic and the stories that are associated to that epic. And the only comment or the only tip that I usually give my clients here is, if you have like a 200 characters title, your epic name should be the most precise, concise, descriptive title you can give it. Because the epic name is going to show up on every single story. And so if you write out this giant epic name, you're only gonna get the first few characters of that epic name. And if it's not descriptive, then it's not gonna really help you identify what those stories are related about without actually clicking into them. So that's like my number one tip if you walk away with anything is give your epic name something that is short, precise, concise, and descriptive at the same time. This is gonna help teach yourself significantly more because you're gonna be able to create these things. So let me actually create a demo epic. And then again, I'm gonna just basically just do the same thing below and then I'm gonna hit create. This is automatically gonna create my epic. Now, again, if you're completely new to Jira, you're probably gonna be wondering, and keep in mind, I am in a scrum type board, wondering to yourself, where the heck is my epic? Um, it says that I created it, epic DP-42, but if you actually look in your backlog, you're not gonna find it. And that is because the backlog doesn't actually show you your epics, at least in a scrum board. And so your epics are actually, if you turn your head sideways, they're on the side here. And so you'll see that my a demo epic number 42 is actually in that epic pain. And so this is really key because this trips people out. Most people will ask the question of, I created an epic, where did it go? Surprise, it's here. <laughs> it went into the epic pain that's on the left. Now, if you're in a Kanban board, let me show you a demo Kanban board. This filter for this board should be such that my epic should show up, yep. You'll notice that my epic shows up. And that's because out of the box, a Kanban board it's gonna just show you all the issue types because in Kanban, there really isn't that sense of organization that is so key and critical to a Scrum method success. Kanban is gonna treat every issue, whether it's a epic story, subtask, whatever you throw at it, it's gonna treat it as an equal and it's just gonna display it to you unless you make some configurations. Okay, so now that you've seen how the epics are treated in the Kanban board, let's switch back to 
the scrum board because most teams are going to be using the scrum board anyways. And in scrum, this is how you're usually going to want to see your issues so that you can do your planning. That hitting the create button is one way of creating the epic. The second way is within this pane for the epics, you can actually hit the create button and it will basically pop up the screen. You'll notice that it's a lot more condensed. You're actually only seeing the epic name and summary because those are the only two things that are required. And so when you fill that out, it will create an epic. But a powerful way of creating epics so that you can cheat. Now this is shortcut, but this is a very valuable shortcut. If you use the roadmap here to create an epic, my amazing epic, and you hit enter, Jira is going to go and automatically create the epic as you saw it did DP43. But most importantly, the epic name, the one that I was telling you, you have to be careful. You have to basically put it in twice. The epic name in this view only, in the roadmap view only, will automatically append the epic name for you. So if you don't want to always fill out that epic name and you just want to do like a lazy notation, make sure you come in through the roadmap and create your epics here because this is going to give you this raw power to basically be able to instantaneously create epics. And while you're here, we're going to basically transition to the next phase here, which is how do we associate stories to an epic? So let's take a look at that. In order to associate ep stories to an epic, there's three ways. Okay. One is within this roadmap view, since we're already here, you can click the little plus sign and you can actually pick whether you want a, a task or a bug or a story, whatever issue types are available to you. I only have stories and bugs. So I'm just going to create my first bug and I'll click enter. And now when I open up, so I'm actually going to directly open the epic. You're going to notice that there's an issues in this epic and my first, I don't even know why I called it a bug, but my first story is now in here. So that's the first way. The second way is if you're inside of an epic, you can now see the create issues in epic. And if you click on that, or once you already have one, you can actually just click on the little plus sign, whichever method you want to use. But if you do that, you'll notice that another line is set and you can do my second story. And when you hit enter, that story is now associated to it. Okay. So those are the two ways. Now the third way, I wouldn't necessarily call it advanced Jira, but this method is a slightly more, more advanced. And that is if I go and create a standalone story, some amazing story number number three, and I just create it. You'll notice that it's not connected to the epic. This story just lives in La La Land somewhere in, in the abyss that is my Jira project. There's two ways that I want to show you on how to connect a story. An orphan story is what I'm going to call it, right? A story that is just a standalone story that doesn't actually belong to an epic. There's two ways to connect them. One way is if you're in the backlog view, you'll notice that you have stories and there's, you'll notice that there's colors on the side and those colors one represent the, the well they'll represent different things but the epic is the colorful one and so if i open up my epics pane and i scroll down you'll see my amazing story is purple and so i'm just going to grab that amazing story number three you'll notice that it doesn't have any purple because it's not actually linked to any epic so to link it all i got to do is click and hold drag it over to my amazing epic. You'll notice that the, the screen turns green here with the dotted green line, let go. And now my story is associated to that epic. So now if I open the epic up, you will see that third item in this epic. So that's the one way. The other way is if you have just a random story, so I'm just going to open this one here. Story number two, it doesn't have any epics associated to it. And at this point, you're probably wondering, how do I know if a story is associated to an epic? There's three ways really of finding out. So let me walk you through those. So one, there's an epic link field that you're going to be able to fill out. So if you click on this epic link, you're going to then be able to find whatever epic you want and tie it to it. So I'm going to tie it back to the DP43. So I should have four stories in it. Once I do that, so if you're coming into a story, you look for the epic link. If there's a value in there, that's your epic. Two. You'll notice that in this upper header here, I used to only have DP27 as a story, but now there's a slash and an epic be before it. Not sure why it's saying undefined, but this is how you can also tell because Jira will actually give you the parent of every issue. So if it's a subtask, it'll show you the story. And if it's a story, it'll show you the epic. And if you're on the premium and you have your epic tied to an initiative or some other higher level issue type, it'll also show you just that one layer up. 
So that's another great way of knowing. Does this story belong to an epic? And you'll find that out because it has that relationship up there. And then the final way, which you've probably seen over and over, is there's going to be these colors on the side. So when you're looking at these stories, you're going to be able to see which epic these stories belong to. So that's the three different ways of basically being able to understand or have an appreciation for which stories are tied to which epic. And that's pretty much it. That is essentially how you use epics in Jira. What you do at this point, I recommend you go look at the first two videos to kind of give you some insight as to the method, the strategy that you should be using to create a, a sound and logical organization and hierarchy of epic stories and eventually subtasks. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure you smash that subscribe button. It really, really helps. I'm really trying to grow this channel out and every subscription is just going to help get me to that goal of a thousand subscribers. If you got any value out of this video, make sure you drop a like. If you have any questions about anything that I've covered, please make sure you drop a question in, your, in the comment section below and I will do my best to address it. Thank you very much and I will see you in the next one.